Hello. Welcome to Community Church of New York. I'm Carrie McAvoy. I'm one of the three intern ministers. I started my service with Community Church this past September of 2020. I live in Norwalk, Connecticut. As an intern minister, I help with Sunday services. I also participate in some of the social justice programming, and I spend time with the young people in Children's Chapel and in religious education classes. There's a whole lot going on here at Community Church, not just on Sunday, but throughout the week. I look forward to seeing you in our community spaces. Good morning and welcome to the Community Church of New York. My name is Amy Wilson. I'm a part-time member of the staff here at Community Church and I've been so since January of 2020. I work on a variety of broadcasting and media projects for the church as well as supporting Sunday services just like this one. I am a master's student in addition to my work at the church. I study labor studies at the City University of New York. I live in North Brooklyn, which is where I'm coming to you uh, from this morning. And wherever you are, uh, we're happy to see you and we hope that you enjoy this service. Welcome to community.
to see all of you. You can see that I am in our Hall of Worship, which has been beautifully decorated, just like it is for December every year. We are thrilled to be back here recording a few of our pieces from here for the sake of familiarity, for the sake of tradition, for the sake of bringing us together around some shared visual, something that feels a little more normal this holiday season. And so let's begin with our Advent call to worship. Holy anticipation, that breathtaking space in between what has been, what is, and what is yet to come, where winter dreams reveal secret longings and winged angels announce the coming of love. You draw us to the edge of Advent possibility, like the song of angels drawing shepherds, eyes wide, breath held, waiting, watching. Come, settle into our living. This is a candle of our heritage. In a season of waning light, may it bring hope and warmth for all the world to share. Please join me in our unison affirmation. Unto the Church Universal, which is the depository of all ancient wisdom and the school of all modern thought, which recognizes in all prophets a harmony, in all scriptures a unity, and through all dispensations a continuity, which abjures all that separates and divides and always magnifies humanity and peace, which seeks truth in freedom, justice in love, and individual discipline in social duty which shall make of all persons one beloved community unto this church and unto all its members, known and unknown throughout the world, we pledge the allegiance of our hands and hearts. Carrie's going to have to unmute herself so we can, oh. Everybody.
everybody was sent one of these candles. Do you all have those with you? I see some of you do. All our members were sent a candle. I am really hoping that you have it. And if you weren't sent a candle, I'm hoping that you have another candle that you can light today. And I love seeing everybody's candles. These candles represent our connection to each other. From our central location on 35th Street, every candle was boxed and sent all over the country. During this time of pandemic, when we're not able to be physically together, we have signs and symbols of our connection to each other and to our shared mission and vision for the world. May this candle help to center us and ground us in a time we might feel untethered. I hope along with your candle, you have some matches. Let's all light this candle together. We will light this candle together every Sunday in December to remind us that we are not alone. These candles are lit in all of our houses. I'm gonna let mine burn during the day and you might wanna do the same thing or you can blow it out during the extinguishing at the end of the service. And now we have our pastoral prayer from Carrie. I invite you during this time of prayer to share with us any joys or concerns you might have by writing them in the chat window. Spirit of life, God of many names or no name at all, we ask you to be with us in this time of waiting, in this time when the sun is less visible to us, when the world seems cold and uncertain. Please give us strength to embrace your mystery as we grieve what used to be, as we struggle to find a new way forward. We seek connection with your creative spirit as we remember that sight is only one of our senses, as we learn new ways of being, new ways of bringing warmth to each other. For there is no darkness without light and no light without darkness. As a seed prepares to germinate beneath the soil, as a caterpillar cocoons before becoming a butterfly, there is creativity in darkness and sacredness to be found in waiting. Let us remember the congregation and ministers of Middle Collegiate Church who have, who grieve the loss of their sanctuary. We are praying for Willen Calendar recovering from surgery and for the memory and verve of Diego Maradona. Son-in-law, Marianne's son-in-law who is working hard at home, who has a high risk of COVID and is loving and caring for his son. We hold in our hearts our beloved Janice Marie and her family at this time of grief. Taplima Ansu, detainee from Sierra Leone and all others in immigrant detention. For Annalisa's cousin John, for the lost beloved Reverend Dr. Hope Johnson and for her family. and for Janice Marie Johnson's deep gratitude for all who are holding her and her family as in this horrible time of loss. For all of those joys and concerns we hold in our hearts that remain unspoken, we ask your presence with us, amen and blessed be.
Star for which the world is waiting, Christ the bearer of God's light, rises in the mystic heaven, setting ablaze the soul's dark This is no time for a child to be born, with the earth betrayed by war and hate, and a comet slashing the sky to warn that time runs out and the sun burns late. That was no time for a child to be born, in a land in the crushing grip of Rome. Honor and truth were trampled by scorn, yet here, did the Savior make his home? When is the time for love to be born? The inn is full on this planet Earth, and by a comet the sky is torn, yet love still takes the risk of birth. Two thousand years ago, in the land of Palestine, a young woman was pregnant with her first child. We often call her Mary or sometimes Miriam. She was a teenager by our standards, but not by theirs. She was a young married woman and she was pregnant. We love talking about Mary as poor because there were really only two possibilities, the ruling class and everyone else, but she wasn't desperately poor. She had food and family and shelter and the men in her community were educated. She might be called middle class if such a thing had been invented yet. Palestine, part of the land called Canaan, had two parts, Judea and Israel. The land had been invaded and divided and won back several times in history. When our young family was playing out this drama, we've reimagined countless times over millennia, the land was part of the Roman Empire, having been Greek for centuries before that. Roman soldiers occupied and defended a complicated system of kings and emperors. There was a national religion and lack of adherence made you not only an outsider, but potentially treasonous. Jews were living in a fragile world, practicing their own religion and trying to stay under the radar. Attention was high. Violence erupted periodically. Jews were an easy target since they did their best to remain outsiders and not part of the mainstream Roman culture. People lived on edge. And with so much pressure coming from outside, Jews often fought with each other about what they wanted to do about their situation. They were a conflicted and divided people. Mary lived her life as all pregnant women in first century Palestine did. She fetched water and ground grains to make flour for bread. When she heard her cousin was pregnant too, she traveled a distance to help her through 
that difficult transition of the last few weeks of pregnancy and birth, the first few weeks as a new mother. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months and returned home in time that she and her husband could head back to Bethlehem to register for the census and pay their taxes. I want to tell you that it was nearing the solstice, that the days were short and the nights were long. I want to tell you that, and I will, even though Jesus was born in spring, but I don't want to get, let all the facts get in the way of a very good story. So it was a time of darkness. Mary and Joseph and their parents and brothers and sisters and all the people who loved them were all waiting for the birth of this new baby. It was all very ordinary. Pregnancy is a good metaphor for the season, this Advent season of waiting. The light is less and the darkness takes over. This is the Christian response to the natural cycle of earth. Every religious tradition has stories and rituals around the turning of earth away from and then toward the sun. The Christian use of Mary's pregnancy and that whole story of the waiting, this time of expectant hope really works for this time, right? Advent marks the last few weeks of her pregnancy leading up to Christmas day when her child is born. The Christian readings at this time call for a patience and the expectancy of a new age of justice and peace when wisdom will be born into the world and light will return. Waiting is what pregnant women do. It is a holy time. Movement is limited in those last few weeks. Feet are swollen, backs are strained, Early contractions highlight the anticipation. Advent ends with the birth of Jesus, the birth of light into the world. It's predictable, but knowing that it will come doesn't alter the anticipatory experience of living in the meantime, that space between what was and what will be. Advent walks us into the darkest days. The light grows shorter and shorter and the nights are not only long, they are deep and dark. The dark is pregnant with expectation. The unknown opens up the possibilities. The emptiness of the dark is filled with hope. The dark of night will end with a glorious sunrise. The dark of winter will end with the spring. Spiritually, each dark night of the soul comes to a close, ends with an awakening, a new way of living and being in the world. We sit in the dark, waiting for the holiness of the coming light. Like the new mother knows, the dark of expectant pregnancy soon gives way, soon births something unknown and gorgeous and exciting. And we need something gorgeous and exciting to be born. Darkness is welcome during Advent. It reminds us that we're living in this in-between space, the period of waiting. I love Advent probably more than I love Christmas. Christmas is, you know, one day, maybe a day and a half. Advent is four full weeks. Advent is about getting ready, about expecting something greater than what we have now, waiting for the light to be born. Jesus in the Christian story is the bearer of the light, the bringer of hope to the world. Christmas is the big celebration, but Advent has depth and a richness that allows Christmas to be what it is. The anticipatory beauty of Advent is found in so many scriptural images. Valleys filled up and mountains made low, crooked made straight, the angels and virgins and promises of a Messiah, prepare ye the way of the Lord, all will be right with the world. Advent's beauty is in the blending of hope for something better, for a Messiah, for something to look forward to, together with real life, the life we're living right now. It's the messiness 
of people looking for more. We have the people in the desert going to John the Baptist, wanting to follow a prophet. The hypocrisy of religious and political leaders, a truth we still live with. A young girl dealing with an unplanned pregnancy, the reality of difficult life choices. Advent speaks to the real circumstances that people every day, average people deal with all the time. And Advent weaves the coming of a Messiah through it all. Christmas tells us of the extraordinary. Advent is about living in the ordinary world, knowing something magical, something extraordinary is going to happen. Advent poetically demonstrates the interweaving of incarnation and current events. We have become a people waiting for a Messiah, not unlike the world of first century Palestine. We, we have civil unrest and uneasy tension between people, leaders who are either incompetent or power hungry or both. Too many are poor, sick, oppressed, treated unjustly. Too many seek violence or even war as a solution. It's into this world, into our world that hope is born. What I'm wondering this morning is what exactly we're waiting for. What is the child we are wanting to be born? What are we pregnant with? Is it hope for a new presidency that might alleviate some of the pressure and let us move forward on climate and health care, but that's not all of it. We're waiting for a vaccine in the end of a pandemic that upended our lives in previously unimaginable ways. We're waiting for racial justice, for economic justice, for full inclusion of transgendered people and people with many different physical abilities and body types. We're waiting for an end to the national divisions that seem to only get worse. And maybe we're waiting for an end to grief, to loneliness, to fear and anxiety, and financial insecurity. This is our season. This is our time to wait, to wait and to act in the darkness. As Mary was waiting, she spent time with Elizabeth, her cousin. I've been watching you all do the same thing. You're calling each other. You're sending and receiving gifts. I mean, this, this gift, this candle, this idea was from our worship associates who said, we need to be connected to each other. You're writing letters, you're protesting, you're posting pictures of your lives on social media. You're reaching out when someone is in trouble. You're going for walks and meeting in parks when it's safe, maybe sharing a bench and a sandwich. You're showing up here, looking for your people, finding joy in each other's faces. You're not just waiting in the dark. You're quietly, beautifully building the new world. From the dark, you are delivering love into the world. We're about to hear the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. We are all part of the divine spirit. We all participate in the mystery we call God. During this Advent season, aware that we live in the meantime, in the space between what is and what will be, we look together in hope. The dark is pregnant with expectation. We will wait together. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and with your captive children dwell. 
give comfort to all exiles here, and to the aching heart bid cheer. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come within as love to dwell. Whether we are together in body or in spirit, we are always one community, a single church with a shared mission and a vision of the world grounded in welcome and equity. Even when we are online, we have many programs through the week to keep us connected to the world, to each other and to our deepest selves. On Tuesday, December 15th, Reverend Peggy will host an evening of holiday storytelling. Please join us as we gather around a virtual campfire and tell each other what Christmas, Hanukkah, Solstice, Diwali, and Kwanzaa were like in our homes. We'll begin at 7 p.m. in the main room. We will have one online Christmas service this year. It will be on Christmas Eve at 5.30. Our pledge season has begun, which means you may have received a letter asking you to help us fulfill our mission this year through a promise of financial support. We will have our, the extinguishing of our chalice and during the postlude, there'll be a video um, so that you can learn how to donate to Community Church of New York. Thank you. Knowing how quickly the flame of truth may be extinguished, how easily the chalice of fellowship broken. Let us be vigilant in faith, keep peace in our hearts, and make care for each other the watchword of our lives together. And so our light goes out everywhere into the world. Our light goes out into the world, bringing healing and hope wherever it's needed. Let us go in peace to love and serve the world and one another. <laughs>